welcome back to my little crochet corner my name is maham and i crochet bookish inspired items or things that turn your everyday objects into something a little bit cuter you can find some of my free patterns posted over here on my blog and if you like my work and want to support me with donations or purchase some of my ko-fi patterns you can do so over here today i am finally going to be showing you how to crochet my emma book cover which is one of my most famous patterns and the thing that got me a lot of followers in the first place and I'm going to be making it for another one of my Jane Austen books because I really do not like the cover and I think we can do so much better. I'm going to be using blue and yellow and I'm so glad to finally be making this. Let me know if it works out for you and let's get started. For this project, I'm using a 4.5 millimeter hook and yarn size that's appropriate for that hook. I'll be using blue and yellow to match the book that I'm making this for. With the blue, I'm going to start off by making the heart and the blue will basically replace the pink in the original book cover that I did. So we're going to start off by making a magic ring. If you struggle with doing a magic ring, I recommend that you practice because it's very useful in most crochet projects. So I'm going to wrap my yarn around my fingers and you're going to have this little X shape and my other finger is holding it tight. I'm going to put my hook under, grab onto this and twist it up like that. And then I'm going to grab onto this end over here. I'm going to be chaining one. So pull and let go. And there you'll have your magic ring. Now we need to chain two more times to get a total of three chains. So one, two, and now we've started off with three chains. And now we're going to be inserting two double crochets into the magic ring. So all the stitches that we're going to be doing are going to be inserted into the magic ring. So to make a double crochet yarn over, insert your hook. This is how I like to hold my magic ring from the bottom so I can control what I'm doing. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and yarn over, pull through two. And that is basically how you make a double crochet. We're gonna do one more. So we did chain three and two double crochets. The chain three counts as your first double crochet. So technically we have three double crochets over here. And now we're gonna chain two, one, two. And now we're gonna be inserting three double crochets into the magic ring. Yarn over, So your hook. We're making kind of like a square, granny square in this part. And now I'm doing my last double crochet, my third double crochet. And now we're going to be chaining two again. And now we're going to be inserting three more double crochets into the magic ring. So the pattern here is three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets, chain two. And the pattern goes around four times to make four sides of the square. I've got my two corners. I'm going to chain two. So the chain two is basically a corner and this little space here is called a chain space. And I'm going to be inserting three double crochets again into the magic ring. And my third double crochet. Like that, I'm gonna tighten this a little bit. And now chain two again to make your last and fourth chain space. One, two, three, that's four. And now we're going to be tightening this. And I'm going to slip stitch into the third chain. So that's our chain one, chain two, chain three. And I'm just gonna go and slip stitch into it. So you grab the yarn, pull it through, and then that same loop, you're gonna pull it through your other loop. And that's how you have your little square. I'm just gonna tighten this so the hole gets smaller. 
Now we're going to start to give the square the heart shape. And the first thing you're going to do is chain one. And now we're going to be working into the chain spaces. Your chain space is this area right here where your chain twos are. And we're going to be inserting eight double crochets in this first chain space. So yarn over and insert eight double crochets right over there. Three and four, five, six, seven and eight. Before I do my eighth one, I'm going to push these to the side a little bit so I have some space. And eight. You can count them to make sure that you have eight, not more, not less. And now we're going to chain one and single crochet into the next chain space. So just one little single crochet. Like that. So you can see that you have the curve of the heart. And now we're going to be chaining one again. And this time, instead of working into the chain space, we're going to be working in this middle double crochet right here. So this, so you have one, two, three, we're going to be working to the second. And in the second double crochet, we're going to be inserting two single crochets. So one and two, then we're going to chain one and insert two more single crochets in that same space. One and two. So that makes the point of the heart. We're going to chain one again. And now we're going to be inserting one single crochet in the next chain space. So this is your next chain space. Go into it, insert one single crochet and chain one. And now in the next chain space, we are going to be inserting eight double crochets. So yarn over, insert your hook, and just insert eight double crochets. Three, four. I've got eight double crochets here, and now we're going to be ending our heart by slip stitching into the center. Oh, before you slip stitch, don't forget to chain one. And now just slip stitch into any area. So I'm going to go right here because I want my heart to have a nice little point. So I'm going to go all the way down to whatever center I can find and slip stitch. And then I'm just going to see if pulling it back makes it pointy. And it does. Now to end the heart, I'm going to be chaining one, or actually I'm going to chain two just to make it extra secure. And I'm going to pull the yarn and cut pull this turn it to the back and then i'm going to pull this way which makes the heart have that little point in the center and there you go there's your little heart now we're going to start by making the first border around the heart i'm going to be using yellow and we're going to start off by making a slip knot I've got my slip knot and now we're going to be attaching the slip knot to your heart. So over here you're going to see that little point right over there and you're going to see that you have your chain one. So the part that's not connected to that stitch is basically your chain one and it's going to be hard to tell but this is a stitch, this is a stitch, those two are stitches, so that's your chain one. And all I'm going to do is I'm going to be inserting it into the back loop. So front loop, back loop, I'm going to go into the back loop. And then I'm going to be doing a slip stitch to attach this. So I'm just going to grab the yarn through the blue and the yellow. And that's basically how I attached the yellow to the blue. I'm going to tighten the slip knot a little bit. And now we're going to be working into only the back loops of our heart to make the border. The first stitch we're gonna be doing is a single crochet. So we're gonna single crochet into this back loop over here. I'm gonna be working over my yellow yarn. So I did a single crochet. Now we're gonna do a half double crochet in the next back loop. Okay. 
going to be doing a double crochet and then a triple crochet crochet so yarn over insert your hook for a double crochet then we're going to do a triple crochet for a triple crochet you yarn over two times insert your hook in the back loop only then you yarn over and pull through two three times and that's how you make a triple crochet so by working into the back loops we're giving our heart this nice little border that goes around it we're going to chain two again we're making a chain space and in the same so in the next stitch we're going to be doing a double crochet and then a half double crochet into the next stitch and then we're going to be doing four single crochets in the next four stitches so one two i'm not going to be working over it anymore i think i've done enough three and four and now we're going to chain two one two to make our next chain space and then we're going to single crochet in the next four stitches again so one two three and then my fourth one is going to be a little bit tight to get into because that's the one where i did my slip stitch i'm just gonna try to squeeze it in my fourth single crochet now we've completed one side and we're going to basically repeat the same steps we did here but the opposite way on the other side but before we do that we have to make like that little point so we're going to be doing a half double crochet in the same place where you did your slip stitch so that's where i did mine so i'm going to insert my hook into that same place and just do a half double crochet oops a loop pulled out i'm going to try this again and hopefully push in the loop as well oh no keeps coming back okay got it and then i'm going to do a double crochet and that just makes the point of your heart a little bit more noticeable. Mine's not completely in the center, but that's okay. And now I'm going to be doing four single crochets again. So insert my hook into the next stitch. One, two, three. And I'm so sorry if it's really noisy in the background. There's just a lot of people walking around the hallway. So I did four single crochets. And I want to say that if you reach the end of the heart and... You still have more stitches left to do, but you've run out of stitches. The only thing I can recommend is starting over because you might have accidentally missed a few on the other side. I remember I had lots, lots of um, questions about this in my star granny square tutorial. And um, since this is a YouTube tutorial, there's not much I can do other than recommend that you start over and try again because there's no way that I can see your work or count your stitches or exactly find your mistake. So yeah, I'd recommend that you start over if you end up not having enough space for all the stitches. Okay, with that being said, I'm going to chain two and I'm going to insert four single crochets into the next four stitches. One, two, three, and four. So we have three corners so far, one, two, and three. Those are your chain spaces. And now I'm going to be inserting a half double crochet, then a double crochet. And then we're going to chain two, one, two, and insert a triple crochet. A triple crochet is when you yarn over two times. And then we're going to do a double crochet. A half double crochet and in that same place where you attach your yarn over there we're going to be inserting a single crochet so in that same place got a single crochet and that basically completes your first side and to end this I'm just gonna slip stitch into the slip stitch you can slip stitch wherever as long as it's right next to the place where you did your single crochet i'm just going to slip stitch here and then i'm gonna chain one sorry 
to end this, I'm just going to chain two to make it secure. Cut my yarn, pull, and just tighten it. And there we've completed our border around the heart. And I'm going to be getting my next color. So I'm going to be getting some blue. And then we're going to be starting our other border. So for the next step, please remember that your chain spaces where you did your chain twos, so all of these, you should have four chain spaces. These are the places where you're going to be making the corners of your granny square or the square itself. So just make sure that you know what these are and let's get started. I'm going to start by attaching my yarn into any one of the chain two spaces. I recommend the big ones on the side. And I'm going to do this by making a knot. So just make a knot with your yarn and tighten. And now I'm going to be chaining three. So this chain three will count as your first double crochet. And now we're going to be repeating a pattern. So we're going to be working in clusters of three double crochets. So that's a three double crochet cluster, which basically means that in each stitch or chain space, we're going to be inserting um, clusters of three double crochet. So this is my first double crochet technically. And I'm going to be inserting two more to make a cluster of three. I'm working into that same chain space. I've got my first cluster and now we're going to be working into this right here. So whatever the center is, I've got my chain two space here and then I've got five stitches. So I'm going to be working into the third one right here. So the cluster is in the center of this side. Oh, and don't forget to chain one after every double crochet cluster. And now I'm going to be working into the third stitch and I'm going to be inserting three double crochets or a cluster. And once we've done our cluster, we chain one and now we're going to be working into our chain two space and inserting another cluster. Okay, now since our chain two space is also the corner of our square, we need to make it into a corner. And to do that, you're going to chain two. So we chain two. And then we insert another cluster into that same space. So yarn over and insert three more double crochets into that same space. And my last one. And there, this is basically how you make a corner or the corner of your square. Now we're going to do cluster, corner, cluster, corner, cluster, and then complete this corner over here. Remember, you chain one. And now I'm going to find the middle. So I've got three here, three here, and then a chain two space. So I'm going to be working right here, which would be, that's my half double crochet, I think. And I'm going to be inserting a cluster here. So whenever I say cluster, that means three double crochets in the same stitch. Whenever I say corner, that means three double crochets, then a chain two, and then three double crochets. And remember, after each cluster, you have to chain one. And now we're going to be doing a corner so into the chain two space and insert three double crochets and then chain two, then three double crochets to complete the corner. Once that is done, we're going to chain one and then do our next cluster. Find the middle. I've got two here, two here. So I'm going to be working into this one, the middle one. There's no absolute way that you have to do this. Just approximate which one's the middle stitch for you. Now chain one after your cluster and now make a corner. 
The reason why I'm not repeating the stitches is because I want you to get used to the wordings so that you can do this by yourself and understand how to make the square bigger um, on your own. So I did three double crochets, chain two, and then three more double crochets to complete the corner. After each corner, we chain one, and now we're going to be doing our last cluster. Um, I'm going to work into my single crochet over there. I'm doing eight cluster. It's very tight because the single crochet is working up to the slip stitch. So get to the orange working too. And I'm chain one, and now I'm going to complete the corner. Completing the corner means you already have one half of the corner here. And now you're going to be completing the other half of the corner by inserting three more double crochets. So whenever I say completing the corner, it means adding the next half of the corner, just three double crochets, and then chaining two to make space for the other corner that you're going to do when you increase the size. And then you just slip stitch into the third chain. So one, two, three, and slip stitch. To end it like that. This is what my square looks like so far and to make this square bigger so that it fits your book here is what you're basically going to be doing. It's important to listen to this part. It's going to be a lot of talking but it's important to understand the method that we're working with so you can increase and work on your own. What we're going to be doing is you're going to attach your yarn into any one of the chain two spaces. Your chain two spaces are the ones in your corner. So let's say that I'm going to attach it here. Even if the square is bigger, the only difference is going to be how many spaces you have, but you're always going to have four chain two spaces. Just the number of chain one spaces is going to increase. So let's say that I attached my next color with a knot here. I'm going to chain three, do two double crochets, which makes a total of three double crochets, which is one part of the corner that's supposed to be in this chain two space. In each chain two space, there's going to be a corner. And then I'm going to chain one. I'm going to do a cluster, chain one, cluster, chain one, corner, which is three double crochets, chain two, three double crochets. Once I'm done with the corner, I'm going to chain one, cluster, chain one, cluster, chain one, corner, chain one, cluster, chain one, cluster, and then do the same thing. So chain one corner, chain one cluster, chain one cluster, and then I'm going to complete the corner. So remember, we already have three double crochets here, right? So chain three plus the other two double crochets. We're going to do three more double crochets, which will complete both sides of the corner. Then we're going to chain two and then slip stitch, just like we did over here. Okay, so let's see that in action. I'm just going to end this by chaining two and then cutting my yarn. And now I'm gonna be using some yellow. So just like I explained, you can attach it anywhere. To make sure that your heart doesn't get wonky, what I like to do is turn it around and then work the opposite way. This just keeps my work from leaning too much on one side. So you can turn your work after each color and just attach it in any chain to space with a knot, just like we did before. So right now I'm attaching my next color, just with a knot. And now we're gonna do one half of this corner, which means chaining three, one, two, and three, and then doing two double crochets. One, two, and then remember we're going to chain one, and now we're going to do a cluster in the chain one space. Cluster is three double crochets. Now we're going to chain one, do a cluster. And after we're done with the cluster, we're going to chain one, and now we're going to do a corner because we have one. We do a cluster first. I'm just working on top of my ends, which is also why I don't always attach it in the same chain two space because this way I can work over my ends and not have to leave them in later. And now we're going to chain two because we're making a corner, and then another cluster in that same space. And now I'm done with the corner. So after corner chain one, so we always chain one after each cluster. And then in the corner chain two. And now we're gonna do cluster. After cluster chain one, and then we go into the next chain one space, do another cluster. So in every chain one space, you do a cluster. In every chain two space, you do a corner. And okay, I've gone all around the square. I just need to complete this corner over here. So I've already chained one. I'm gonna be inserting three double crochets into this chain two space. This is the space where we attached our yarn. Okay, once that's done, so don't just stop here and then connect it. You need to make that next chain two space for the next row. So chain two, and then you can slip stitch into the top of the chain three. So just slip stitch. And then you can chain one or two. You can cut it, and then you're done with another row that increases the size of your square. Keep doing rows that make your square bigger until 
the square can comfortably fit onto your book. So I'm going to stop here because if I did another row, this square would be going out of my book. And I know there's a lot of borders left, but I'm going to be doing a single crochet border here. Now I'm going to show you what I did for my original book cover. For my original book cover, I did, so this is the heart. We're not going to count this because that just gives it the square shape. I did one, two, three additional rows of, you know, the square to make the square bigger. So using the same steps that I just showed you here, I kept adding rows, so corner, cluster, corner, cluster, corner, all around, and I did three more of those because the book that I had previously was more squarish, so I needed to make more of a square shape. But the book that I am using today is more rectangular. So can you see the difference? So here I had to make more of a square shape, which is why I did more rows of the squares. But over here, I have to make more of a triangle shape. So I'm gonna be doing more rows on top. Now we're gonna be giving this the triangle shape by adding more rows on top and bottom, but not on the sides. So to do this, we're gonna do the same thing. We are going to be making one half of a corner. So instead of making a corner like this, we're only gonna be doing this part. So we're going to be attaching it into the chain two space. Um, I realized that this is probably the hardest part for people to understand from the written pattern. So I'm going to make sure that I explain it as best as I can, which is also why I chose a rectangular book for the video tutorial, because if I'd chosen a square book, then I wouldn't have had a chance to show you how to do multiple rows. Because in the original book cover, I only did one row to make it a little, little bit more rectangular. So now I'm gonna chain three, and then we're just gonna insert two more double crochets like we normally do. If you need to make your square bigger to fit your book, please do not follow this. Instead, just keep doing all around like we did for the previous row, but if you're ready to make your book a little bit more rectangular, give it more length up here, then you're on the right track. Now we're gonna chain one. We're gonna be doing a cluster, And then we're going to chain one, do a cluster. So it's the same thing, but instead, the only difference is we're not going to be working on the sides. We're just going to stop here. So I'm going to do cluster, chain one, cluster, chain one, cluster, and then I'll show you what to do next. I did two double crochets here, and I'm, to complete the cluster, I'm going to do one more. So this is my third double crochet. Once I've yarned over once, I'm not going to complete the double crochet. Instead, I'm going to attach the next color that I want for the next row. So I've changed the technique a little bit from my written pattern, but I think this is gonna make it much easier for you guys. Make a little loop with your next color that you want for the next row and slide it through to complete the double crochet with the other color instead. And now you're gonna be working with this color. So you're just gonna chain three, one, two, three and then you're going to turn your work like this and now we cannot put a cluster here because this has to be a straight edge so what we're going to do is we're going to be putting a cluster here but the important thing to note is that if we directly do a cluster what's going to happen is that there's not going to be any length over here so what we're going to be do doing is we're going to be substituting the stitches that we're missing in this part. So we have one double crochet, but then we need to also make a substitute for this double crochet, this double crochet, and chain one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain two for the two double crochets that we're not making. Now I can make a cluster into the chain one space. This is going to make more sense once I do my next row because in the next row we're going to have to put a cluster here. So two and three. So I did my cluster and now I'm going to be chaining two to substitute for these two double crochets that I'm not going to do. And then I'm going to be inserting a double crochet into the top of that chain three. 
but I'm not going to complete the double crochet. Instead, I'm going to be switching colors back to blue. So make a loop and slide it through like that. And then I'm going to be chaining three and turning my work. And what you can do is you can cut your yarn. You don't have to keep it there. You can just cut it. It's not going to unravel and then you can tie it off or weave it in later. And now we're going to be making our cluster. You're going to be doing the other two double crochets in the chain two space. So look how you have a chain two space over here. You're going to be inserting two double crochets over there. And look at that. You've restarted the pattern that you had over here. So I did this and now I'm going to be doing a cluster here as well. So the same thing we did here, but this time directly into this space. Oh, and I need to chain one after my cluster. Now I'm just inserting three double crochets into this space over here. Two and three. Now, if you need to do more rows, what you're gonna do is you're gonna attach your next color and then you're gonna repeat the same steps that we did for this yellow row over here. If you think that it's long enough, so remember that your book has two sides and you're not gonna be working like this. So don't just keep adding rows. Instead, place it in the center. So place the heart in the center and see if you have enough rows. So maybe if I have, I've done three rows here. If I do three more, oops, so three rows. If I do three more here, um, I'll have the size of the square, for example. It's just an example. I am gonna be doing another row, but I'm gonna be doing it off camera because I don't want this video to be too long. This is how your finished square or rectangle should basically look. You should have some space on both sides and some space at the top. So be sure that it's not completely to the sides like this, because if it's completely to the sides, what's gonna happen is that your book cover is gonna be very loose. So make sure that you do have some space left on the edges. Now we're going to be working and making this border around as well as the little clasp that's going to hold your book in place is we're going to be doing the spine and then we're going to be making the back as well as the back clasp. Grab the color that you want to use for the border and attach it to the end of your, the bottom end of your square. I put my hook through that last double crochet that I did and I'm going to make a loop, pull it through, and now I'm just going to chain one and we're going to be doing a single crochet all the way down. So insert my hook into the stitches and I'm going to be working over my end as well. I'm just going to be inserting one single crochet in each stitch. Now, once you come to this end, please remember that you need to do two single crochets because there are supposed to be two double crochets here. Remember our substitute chains. So insert. So I just removed one single crochet because I remember that we need to do that little clasp thing. So to make the clasp, you can chain two or three. And the way that this works is that when we put it on our book, when we put it on our book, this clasp goes around the corner and it connects back onto the cover, basically holding it in place. So make sure that whatever number you chain, it's not too loose. And then once you have your chain for the clasp, you're just gonna go back and insert a single crochet into the space. And now we're gonna be working along this side. You're not gonna have definite stitches here, but again, you can do slip stitches like I did in my original pattern, but I'm going to be doing single crochets for this because I did have a lot of space left over here. A little bit more of the border just so I can show you. Basically, this clasp is going to go on the corner like that, holding it in place. Now I'm at the end and I need to do the corner here. So the same thing we did over here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to chain three again. And then I'm going to insert a single crochet right into the next stitch, making the corner. And then over here, I'm just going to go along, inserting one single crochet in each stitch. I'm going to show you what it looks like on. I haven't completed it yet, but basically I put the clasp on the corner. And then I put the other side on the corner. 
And then of course it's gonna get stretched back and the border is gonna come there, but that's basically how it works. I finished the end and now we're gonna be single crocheting all the way down this side as well. So same thing as before, you don't need to do any corners or clasps or anything, just single crochet all the way down like you've been doing for the other sides. Now we are going to be working along we're going to be working in rows to cover the spine and for the spine i've used single crochets just so that it could help me distinguish from the back where i'll be using double crochets so to do this we're going to be working in rows so no need to go all around anymore once you finish the end you're just going to chain one turn your work and you're just going to be doing regular rows of single crochet which means you ignore the turning chain or the chain one that you did go into the second stitch from your hook and you just do one single crochet in each stitch all the way down i'm done with my first row and then i'm going to be sorry and then i'm going to be chaining one or doing my turning chain turning my work and then once again doing another row of single crochets until it's as big as my book's Fine. so it's just one single crochet in each stitch i'm all done with the spine this comes down to the spine of my book and i just wanted to let you guys know that i miscalculated the size that my square was supposed to be and now most of my spine comes on top of the book so please just be careful when you're measuring and make sure that everything fits nicely also, this color is so unflattering, and I'm so sorry that you have to look at this horrible color combo. I really thought it would turn out better, but it's just not giving what I thought it would be giving. We're now going to be working on the back cover of the book, and it's the same thing. We're just going to be working in rows, but instead of doing single crochets, we're going to be doing double crochets. Um, you could continue doing single crochets, but the reason why I'm switching stitches to double crochets is because double crochets are bigger, so I would finish faster, and also because I want the texture difference between the single crochet and double crochet looks really nice, so the spine is like a different texture, and then the back is a different texture. It's just something that I like, but you could continue with single crochets if you don't want to do double crochets. Um, the only difference is that when you're starting a new row, instead of chaining one, you are going to be chaining two because we are going to be doing rows of double crochets. And instead of going into, you know, the second chain from your hook, you're going to be going into the third and you're going to yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then yarn over, pull through two. And then you're just going to go and insert one double crochet in each stitch all the way down the row i'm doing my last double crochet of the row i'm just going to show you how to start another row so it's the same thing but instead of chaining one you're going to chain two turn your work and double crochet into the first stitch and that's basically it you're just going to be inserting one double crochet in each stitch and keep doing rows until um, the double crochet rows are as big as the back of your book, so that big. Done with the back of my book. Now, this doesn't fit my book exactly. There was a little bit of space left here, and it's important to leave that little bit of space, otherwise your cover will be way too loose and it won't hang on to your book. Next, I'm going to be attaching my yarn from where my first double crochet starts. So, right over here. And I'm going to attach my yarn with a knot and then I'm just going to slip stitch all the way down this side. So I'm just going to make a little knot. And now we're just going to slip stitch. So pull up a loop. You can chain one, which will count as your first slip stitch, and then just poke your hook into whatever space you find and just slip stitch all around the back part of your cover. There's no exact place where you have to go, just anywhere you find space. This is just making a nice little neat border and it's also a way to get the clasps on the other side. 
I'm at the end of my first side and now we're gonna make the clasp. I'm gonna chain three. You might be chaining less or more than me depending on how big your book's corners are. And then I'm gonna skip a little place, leave a little space for the clasp to slide onto the book and just slip stitch on the other side. So I have this little space where the corner can fit. And now I'm gonna be working all along this side just inserting slip stitches. At the end of the other side, and I'm gonna do my clasp. So I'm gonna chain three, leave a little bit of space and slip stitch onto the other side. And now I'm just gonna be slip stitching all the way down until I come back to where the double crochets end over here. I've reached the end and I'm just going to fasten this off by chaining two and I cut and I pull, sorry that must have been loud, um, and now you can weave in your ends, you can tuck them in, you can push them in, whatever you like doing and then I'm going to show you what it looks like on. Here is my finished book cover. I'm not too happy with the colors but I hope this tutorial helped you figure out how to make the Emma book cover if you were finding the written pattern too hard and I just want to thank you for all your love and support that you've been giving me for the last few months and I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think in the comments and what color you are going to make your book sleeve.